Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about how to run Android builds on Travis CI. So I had a video a few weeks back or months or years <laughs> that I actually talked about how to run your builds on Travis CI. And it was built on the Travis infrastructure. So they have an Android build and uh, so on and an Android language. And they could download all the binaries for you. And I ran with that for a long time. And I also had my project set up in the pretty much same manner for a long while. And recently I updated to the latest version of the uh, IntelliJ, the latest version of Android Studio, the latest version of the build tools, and so on. And everything broke in the Travis CI. It was not stable enough. I was looking for a solution to this. I had some people in this uh, quick secure uh, response login project that actually made some pull requests, and these pull, these pull requests didn't go through testing because of this infrastructure. So it was a bit was a bit frustrating for me that I had a build system that didn't really uh, work every time and it actually failed a lot. So I went down and looked around a little bit on the internet, got some inspiration and I also did a lot of changes myself. And finally, after a few hours of testing back and forth, I found a solution where I could reasonably stably recreate a build of Android. So this is my setup and I will go through it uh, today. First off we have sudo required so we can install whatever package we want in whatever map that we want. Could be good to have. Uh, I run on the distro trusty. It's not important exactly which uh, distro you use but it's fairly recent and has the feature we need. It's a Linux OS and with the language is generic. So this language could have been Android if you wanted to use those features of Travis CI. Then we need to set up some environment variables and I've done some easy steps for myself and actually put all the environment variables on one line. Uh, I tried to make a list of this because that looks better but it didn't export correctly and it was going it was drawing into the late uh, night when I was trying to get this up and running so I didn't test anymore uh, but I set the emulator version so I want to run Android 18 on my emulator I have a target version for my builds at 28 and I also want to use Google APIs and ARM based the uh, 7A for my emulator. So this is the uh, setup in the emulator. We could have had uh, x86 here for instance and we could have used default but I want the Google API so it works well with the Play Store and so on. Um, so I test that functionality. We have the build tools 2803 which is the latest as I record this video. I wanted the ADB install timeout to be 20 minutes. And I also wanted to disable the audio driver for the for my emulator. So first line here, we export the Android home. So this is where I will unpack the Android distro. Then I get the tools directory. So this is the Linux tools that you can download from google.com in order to install Android um, SDK. And this is just the tools. So you need to install all the different build tools and other things that you need as well. So this is just the package manager, if you will, uh, for the SDK tools. And then we unzip that into our Android home and we remove the zip file. So those are the first lines to get everything up and started. We add some things to our path. We have the tools directory, tools bin directory there, are, and platform tools. So these are the directories where all the tooling will be that we will use in this build. Then we need to uh, fi fix a little bit of an issue that you have in your Android build. Uh, it looks for repositories 
in this repository config and it will fail and give you an error message if this is not present. It doesn't really use this file. It doesn't really have to be anything in it. It just gives you a warning. So I created a new directory and I created this config file just to remove that warning. Then I will run the SDK manager with license and yes, so I will accept all the licenses. It's just easier that way because I want this to run and just work. Then we run the SDK manager, install the emulator, the tools and the platform tools. So these are the updated versions of those specific packages and we cut the response of that to dev null so we don't see all that output. Then I list what actually got installed here and I only list the uh, 15 head of those just so I don't see all the output. I just want to see that these different tools were installed on the system and that I'm ready to go with the rest of the things. Then I install the build tools and also the specific Android that I want to target my build to. In this case, Android 28. So this is just so I have the platform tools so I can build my application. And then I want the images that I want to run this on. So I install the emulator for version 18 and also use this ABI here. So this is the ARM-based Google APIs that we have up here. So this is the system image that I want to install. And then I run this command again, just to see that those packages was correctly installed. And it's just a feel good thing when you're looking at a log to see that everything is working uh, well. And it's uh, you also in the future, when updates comes, you want to see that the right updates are actually installed. Then I need to install CMake because I have some native packages in my build, so I will install CMake and I will also install the NDK packaging here and unpack that to my home directory as well. Then I will set the Android NDK to this newly unpacked version of the NDK and I also want to add that to my path so I can use that when I uh, build things and then I will set up my licenses folder and I will add some licensing files to that folder and then I create my AVD. So this is the image that I will run my system in. I will do that with force. I will call it test. And then the new thing in this build here is that the new AVD manager takes a parameter called K that will ex um, describe the full image that I want to run. So this is the system image, Android emulator version, and then ABI that we had up here. So we give it the full string. In the earlier video, I broke these up into different parameters, and that was a bit of a kludge, I think. It's easier to actually have the full description of what image you want to build. Then we have the actual script that I will run. And in this case, I run, first off, a build of the actual Android test here. So we will build this with the where I disable pre-dex, I do a continuous stack trace and this pre-dex will sometime be, uh, it, at least in my application, will sometimes make it more unstable and not uh, run correctly. So I disable the pre-dex and continue if I have any warnings or errors and I will type out the uh, stack trace. Then I start the emulator here. So this will actually run the test emulator with no audio, no window and with GPU shift shader. And this will actually give me a little bit of a performance boost. And I was recommended this from a few sites that I was looking into how to run CAI on uh, Travis. Uh, but it is deprecated or not recommended to run with this flag. So maybe I will remove it in the future if it will become uh, something that makes my build unstable or if it will be removed. But for now I run with it because it actually makes things a little bit more swifter. 
And then I try to run this Android wait for emulator. I think this script is something that is added if you choose the language Android. So it was not available. I think there is a script to actually wait for the emulator. But Travis CI is not that fast. So it will not have a problem with the emulator not running when you actually get there. This uh, shell input key event 82 is an ADB command that will actually remove the screen where you swipe the uh, screen on your phone usually. Then this 82 will open up the device. Might not be required, but I think it's a good practice to remove all hindrance that you can have. And then I run the actual Android test. So this connected debug Android test will run the on-device testing for your system. And what I'm looking for with my builds is that the accessibility testing that I will do on a device will not break in the future. So that's why I'm running these tests. You can also run just a connected debug test and get the unit test version. And you can also build if you like. But if you're running some instrumentation tests, this is the command that you will run. Uh, so this was what I wanted to cover today. This is what I run in my Travis CI today when I build my Android app to test that accessibility is still working even after each pull request. Uh, I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned something today. I will leave the repo uh, URL in the description down below if you want to look, look at this file a little bit more in detail and if you like this video give it a like share it with your friends and colleagues if you have any comments suggestions or anything leave them down in the comment section down below if you haven't subscribed yet please do that and i really hope to see you in the next video